I'm Stephen Malley, advisor to the NHS National Honor Society. I'd like to welcome you to the call to this year's National Honor Society induction, where together we celebrate and recognize these outstanding high school students for their accomplishments both in school and in their community. Not only have these students maintained the highest academic standing within their school, but they have also taken the time to give back to others, both in and outside of their school. This morning, their efforts will be rewarded as they are inducted into the most prestigious national organization across the country. First, I would like to introduce our principal, Mr. Jason Merrill. Welcome family, staff, members of our National Honor Society, and soon to be inductees of the Melrose High School chapter of the National Honor Society. In late spring and early fall, at every high school, every single year, across America, schools induct students into their chapter of the National Honor Society. These students have made incredible strides, both academically, with their community service, they've displayed great character, and they've led by example in many ways. We have incredibly high expectations for our National Honor Society students. It's not just about getting here to this moment, but it's also what are you gonna do for our community and for each other moving forward throughout this year and into next year. I wanna share with you a quote that resonated with me that was shared by Mr. Cochran, who some of you have as a physics teacher. He shared this with me last spring when things changed for me a little bit. And it reads, a leader takes people where they want to go, but a great leader takes people where they don't want to go, but they ought to be. So this is something I think that can relate very well to some of you students that it's not just about bringing people where they want to go, but where you as leaders think that they need to be as far as character and service and leadership in our building and around our community. I want to congratulate both our current members and our soon-to-be members of the National Honor Society. I want to congratulate families and friends who have come here to share this, this time with us. Mr. Malley, and thank you all for being here this morning. Thank you, Mr. Merrill. I would like, now I'd like to welcome Mr. Michael Noon, our honored National Honor Society elected guest speaker for this program. Monday morning attire, it's nice to see you. Some early alarms this morning, I'm sure. Um, thank you to Mr. Malley. Thank you for inviting me to speak here today. Um, I'm flattered to have been asked and to and appreciate the opportunity that I have to share some remarks with you today. Um, first and foremost, I want to congratulate the inductees and their families on the achievement of being um, becoming a member of the National Honor Society. I've taught many of the students in this room. And so I can attest firsthand to the, um, the level of effort and hard work that goes into achieving this accomplishment. Um, I want to commend you all for your commitment not only to academic excellence, but also um, to personal development and to service to your community. As you know, membership in the National Honor Society requires strength of character, leadership, and service to others in addition to, uh, to scholastic aptitude. Your possession of all of those qualities serves as testament to what you value, what you stand for, and to the lessons that you have learned and applied from the people who have raised you, challenged you, and nurtured you to this place. There is tremendous potential in this room. Sitting in front of me is a group of young men and women 
with the power to change the world. I want you to know that, and I want you to know that I mean that sincerely, not in a flip, offhand kind of way. You can change the world. You really can. You have that capacity. Someone in this room might develop a vaccine that saves thousands of lives. Someone in this room might invent a product that improves our quality of life. Your research might help us see the world in new ways. Your art might move people to laughter or to tears. And all of you, each and every one of you, has the power to make all of the difference in someone's life, in somebody's life. Um, some of you have no doubt seen the power that you can exert through the community service that you've done. Um, you all have the power to be agents of change. You all have that potential. Um, but when I think about the word potential, um, I'm reminded sometimes of my high school hockey coach. Um, I played on some, some good teams in high school, and my junior year we had a particularly strong team. We had a, a little winning streak in the middle of the season, and we got ranked number one in the state by the Boston Globe. And we were riding pretty high. We were feeling pretty good about ourselves. Uh, and I remember our coach, who was a little concerned that maybe we were riding a little bit too high, and we were a little bit you know, feeling too good about ourselves, came to us after practice one day and said, gentlemen, you have a lot of potential, but that's all it is. Potential just means that you haven't done it yet. I'm pretty sure he stole that line from somebody, but <laughs> the point remains nonetheless, right? Um, it's nice to be recognized for the things that you've done, but you don't want to lose sight of the work that you haven't done yet. And as you sit here on a day where we acknowledge you for all that you have accomplished so far, spare a thought for the future and the work that you haven't done yet. Unfortunately, in life, there's a lot of things that can trip you up and prevent you from reaching your potential. I want to speak briefly about a few of those things today. Uh, for instance, complacency. Let's talk about complacency. Complacency is that part of us that from time to time is a little too self-satisfied, maybe a little bit overconfident. It's perfectly healthy to be proud of yourself, as you all should be feeling proud of yourself today. Um, it's perfectly you know, normal and, and healthy to feel good about yourself, to believe in yourself. Just keep an eye on the complacent part of you. Make sure you keep that in check. Because complacency manifests itself in, in lots of forms. It wants you to think that you've peaked when you've only started to strive. It asks for less than your best. It accepts less than your best. It misdirects you away from the process that got you recognition and convinces you that the accolades themselves define who you are as a person. It makes you underestimate others and their ability to teach you new things. So you must, you must fight complacency when you encounter it and you fight it by setting high goals for yourself, having high expectations. You set it by being honest about your strengths and your weaknesses, by being open-minded. Most of all, you fight it by moving forward a little bit every day with the resolution to try your best. Trying your best, incidentally, it turns out is no easy task. It's hard, it's just plain hard to get up every day and do your best. Perseverance, you'll learn, is sometimes what separates, though, the great, the good from the great. And that brings me to my next pitfall to avoid as you on the road to try to reach your potential. And that's apathy. That's that nasty little word that seems to keep coming up lately. What does apathy look like? Uh, maybe a student who's on their phone in the middle of class playing a game or texting. Does that resonate with anybody in this room? Uh, what does apathy sound like? I don't know. I don't care. Whatever. Right? Um, you know, you're all, I, you know, I understand that I'm speaking to a room full of National Honor Society students. And so, you know, you wouldn't be where you are without some fundamental level of concern about your education. And so maybe those stories, you know, you can sit there and say, well, that's, that's not me, that's somebody else. But I do want you to know that, you know, regardless of that status you've achieved, that apathy, no one's immune to apathy. 
right? And it's really easy in the modern world to be distracted by things. It's really easy to succumb to peer pressure, for example, um, where people might equate, you know, working hard in school with being uncool or something like that. I think for people that were at graduation in June, I think Maddie Carbono, if you've heard her speak, did a brilliant job talking about that aspect of peer pressure and apathy. Um, sometimes what looks like apathy is masking something else entirely. Uh, I'm not here to, to diagnose anybody. I think it's more complicated sometimes than we make it out. But regardless, apathy is the enemy of potential. It's one of the enemies of it. Um, I'm reminded of a quote um, when I think about apathy from uh, the famous author Roald Dahl who wrote James and the Giant Peach and Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and, and, uh, and countless other beloved children's books. I began to realize, Dahl once wrote, how important it is to be an enthusiast in life. If you're interested in something, no matter what it is, go at it full speed ahead. Embrace it with both arms, hug it, love it, and above all, become passionate about it. Lukewarm is no good. Hot is no good either. White hot and passionate is the only thing to be. Now that's the opposite of apathy, and that's the wish that I have for all of you. Don't be afraid to pursue your dreams, academic and otherwise, and pursue them with passion. And if that makes you uncool or a nerd in someone's eyes, so be it. Okay? The world is full of uncool people who do amazing things every day, right? Young cool people sometimes inherit the earth, so don't worry about that part. Okay, be passionate. The last thing I want to talk to you about today um, is something that some of you might struggle with on a daily basis, and nearly all of you might struggle with at some point, even if you haven't yet. I want to talk about feeling inadequate. For some of the people in this room, school's been a relative breeze so far. And for others to get here today, um, has been a major challenge, marked by a lot of adversity and toil. Regardless of your story, what many of you might find as you continue on in education is that it's easy and common to reach points where you suddenly feel inadequate or insecure. Maybe you start to feel overwhelmed, you worry that you're not smart enough, you're not measuring up to expectations, your own or others. You were always one of the best students in class, but now maybe you're sitting in a room full of AP students or in a college classroom, and self-doubt is creeping in. For me, that happened my freshman year of college. I was one of those kids who school was a relative breeze to me up to that point. Uh, I was fortunate to be accepted into a good college, but I quickly found myself intimidated by my new peers at college and by my professors, and I felt out of my comfort zone. I always loved history, and so I thought I would want to major in history in college, and the first class I took was a history class, um, a European history class, the fall of my freshman semester. And I remember uh, the first paper that I wrote in this class. I worked really hard on it, and I turned it in, and I got it back, and it wasn't so much that the grade was so bad, the grade was, you know, wasn't what I wanted, but it wasn't that the grade was so bad, it was the comments that I remember this professor wrote on my paper. They were harsh, they were stinging, very critical, and it was clear that regardless of what the grade was, he was not very impressed by the work that I had done. And I remember you know, how that felt, um, especially for someone that was accustomed to, to doing well in school. And it, it leveled me, to be, to be honest. I think we all have this inner critic in our head sometimes, um, and my inner critic had a field day with that. It's, you see, you're not smart enough, you're not good enough, you're in over your head. Like, I knew this all along, right? Your inner critic um, you know, pounces on moments like that. And the problem is that when you feel that way, especially for students accustomed to success, as many of you are, it's easy to shut down and get stuck. The protective side of you wants to avoid something like that ever happening again. So you withdraw in big ways and in subtle ways. You try to disappear into the back of a class. You lower your expectations. You stop taking risks. 
It's just human nature. Some of you might be able to relate to some of that. I'm not gonna tell you that those moments won't happen or that they're easy to avoid. You're going to experience disappointment. That's just the reality of life and it's beyond your control. What you can control is your attitude and how you react to disappointment. So my advice to you, stay strong as you continue on your journey. Stick it out when it gets a little bit tougher than you thought it might. Learn from your successes and from your failures. Set high goals for yourself and then pursue them with passion. Rest assured that when difficult times come and they will come, that you have a solid foundation built on these National Armed Society ideals that we talk about, character and leadership and service and scholarship. And you can lean on those as your foundation when things get a little bit tough. You guys are smarter than you know. You're more resilient than you know. Good luck in everything that you do. You already make us proud. Go and make us even more proud. Um, congratulations to all the inductees again and their families. And thank you for this opportunity to speak again today. Thank you, Mr. Noon. Now we would like to invite our six officers up and take this time to discuss the ideals of our National Honor Society members. At the conclusion of each, a candle will be lit to symbolize the members' commitment to uphold that ideal. First, please welcome August Gus Bernhard, our secretary. As members of the NHS class of 2016-2017, we are expected to display outstanding character. This means that a student takes criticism willingly and accepts recommendations graciously, consistently exemplifies desirable qualities of behavior, such as cheerfulness, friendliness, poise, and stability, upholds principles of morality and ethics, cooperates by complying with school regulations concerning property, programs, offices, halls, etc., demonstrates the highest standards of honesty and reliability, shows courtesy, concern, and respect for others, observes instructions and rules, punctuality, and faithfulness both inside and outside of the classroom, has powers of concentration and sustained attention as shown by perseverance and application to studies, and manifests truthfulness in acknowledging obedience to rules, avoiding cheating in all school schoolwork, and showing unwillingness to profit by the mistake of others. Please welcome our treasurer, Ryan Bradford. As members of the NHS class of 2016-2017, we are expected to be scholars. We must go beyond having a particular GPA. The student who is a scholar is dedicated to achieving academic excellence in the classroom, must commit to being a lifelong learner both inside and outside of the classroom, shares their knowledge with others by kind-heartedly helping those with greater difficulties in the classroom. Please welcome our Vice President, Jenna Santos. class of 2016-2017, we are expected to be leaders. A student who exercises leadership is resourceful in proposing new problems, applying principles, and making suggestions, promotes school activities, exercises influence on peers in upholding social ideals, contributes ideas that improve the civic life in the school, is able to delegate responsibilities, exemplifies positive attitude, inspires positive behavior in others, demonstrates academic initiative, 
successfully hold school offices or positions of responsibility, conducting business efficiently and effectively, and without prodding, demonstrates reliability and dependability. Demonstrates leadership in the classroom, at work, and in the school or community activities, and is thoroughly dependable in any responsibility accepted. Please welcome our president, Ms. Tess Castrogini. As members of the NHS class of 2016-2017, we are expected to serve our school and our community. A student who serves is willing to uphold scholarship and maintain a loyal school attitude, participates in outside activities, Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, church groups, volunteer service for the aged, poor, or disadvantaged, family duties. Volunteers dependable and well-organized assistance is gladly available and is willing to sacrifice to offer assistance. Works well with others and is willing to take on difficult or inconspicuous responsibilities. Cheerfully and enthusiastically renders any requested service to the school. Does committee and staff work without complaint and shows courtesy by assisting visitors, teachers, and students. We will now begin the signing ceremony uh, to recognize the amazing accomplishment of these students. The four previously mentioned officers, as well as your two NHS representatives, Joseph Connolly and Ann Morrison, will call your name. Um, as you are called, please step forward to sign your name to the Melrose High School's National Honor Society ledger and to light your own candle on the table. If everyone would, would please hold applause to the end of the ceremony, it would gr be greatly appreciated. Joseph and Ann will now explain the candle lighting ceremony, and we will begin. At the first row, can continue to the the tea candles that will be lit represent the light inside each individual member. The tea candles together, lit from the fire of the same candle, represent a beacon. Alone, you are a small flame, but together, you are a beacon of light. <laughs> Isabel Albuja. Darwin Anderson. Bridget Bright. Hannah Brown. Michael Calvert. Mm -hmm. 
Lucian Carbona. Olivia Chen. Anthony Colozo. Connolly. Samantha D'Alessandro. Dina Chenzo. Olivia DeSecca. Catherine Denning. <coughs> Rachel DeFrya. Ladies, please watch your hair as you are signing the book. <laughs> Samantha Farrell. Mata Fasaye. Lily Fitzgerald. Lauren Freed. That's my sister. <laughs> Virginia Fonsi. <laughs>
Grace Hamilton. William Hanlon. Jonathan Harriet. Troy Healy. Emma Harvey. Margaret Hoff. <laughs> Madeline Hughes. Alba Ilya. Lewis Izzy. <laughs> Caitlin Kenny. Samantha Kroon. Gregory Leo. Ryan Locke. Kathleen B. Robert Mealy. Test me. Really. <laughs> Julian Mercer.
Holly Moore. Devin Mullet. Adriana Nunley. Gabriel Nyland. Kendall Orca Lauren Petrini Sean Prendergast Brianna Prevlon. William Pesigio. Lauren Riley. Hayden Russell. Maria Schwartz. Samuel Stallings. John Sullivan. Catherine Sweet. James Talbot. Owen Thorsteinson. Kylo Waring. Xavier Watts. <laughs> Jack Whitley. Peter Wiesen.
to quickly recognize last year's member. Your president, Tess Gastrogini, is going to read off the names who were inducted last year. Please stand as your name is called. Stephen Abbott, Nicolette Adrian, Griffin Barris, Isabel Bates, August Bernhard, Ollie Bork, Ryan Bradford, Aaron Bright, Molly Bright, John Bowman. Please stay standing. <laughs> Allison Butts, me. <laughs> Nicholas Chan, Molly Clark, Lucy Coleman. <laughs> Joe Connolly, Adam Took, Shane Corialli, Connor Crovo, Justin Crowley, Jenna Del Mastro, Colleen Denning, Cameron DiBacari, Emily DiPietro, Stephanie Dutra, Tanya Dutra, Michaela Finicos, Samantha Fazio, Isabella Federico, Rachel Fricasso, Rachel Freed, Maya Hamburg, Eric Heisline, Tegan Ingalls, Madeline Jancy, Shannon Jones, Tess Leffler, Veronica Lee, Andrew McGuire, Sophia Manfalevit, Jack Mays, Caroline McDermott, Gabrielle McDonald, Julia McLaughlin, Chloe Melville, Bethany Morris, Keith Morris, Ann Morrison, Courtney Murphy, Yvonne Gaza, Caitlin Nguyen, Taylor Norton, John O'Connell, Samantha Pashoyan, Michael Padrini, Cameron Pfeiffer, Rachel Pfeiffer, Jeannie Vaughn, Olivia Rittenberg, Alva Ron, Lily Russell, Olivia Sampson, Jenna Santos, Jacqueline Schwartz, Elizabeth Sherman, Samantha Shields, Nathaniel Chu, Sophie Snagaki, Marie Savoda, Samantha Sweet, Julia Simmons, Maria Tremontosi, Nicholas Bonneau, Ethan Weiss, Patrick Whalen, Jacob Yuzarski, and Olivia Zavetis. As the final piece to our ceremony, the inductees will recite the National Honor Society Pledge as the final act in order to become officially inducted to our chapter. Inductees, please stand and repeat after me. I pledge to uphold the high purposes of the National Honor Society to which I have been selected. Which I, I, will I will be true to the principles, be true to the principles for which it stands. For which it stands. I, will I will be loyal to my school, be loyal to my school. And, I will and I will maintain and encourage, and encourage high, standards of scholarship, high standards of scholarship, leadership, leadership service, service, and character. Thank you, and I would like to congratulate all of you and welcome you as new members of the National Honor Society. I would now like to ask that all members of National Honor Society who were inducted today and last year to please rise and come forward to find your place on an independent stage for the group photo. Yeah,